This is the book of um, Jeremiah chapter 28 and the point is verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. The prophets which prophesy of, of peace when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh have truly sent him. I want to start off by giving all praise, all honor, and all glory to Kol Haloyim La Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rachak with us book of thumb. I say double honors to my apostles, the elders of the great millstone, who teach and do rule well. Peace and salutations to the Akim across the four corners of the earth, pushing his truth with faith and with sincerity, as well as risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. Shalom to the Akim and the Akwa. I thought they were listening and learning. Lord willingly, this is edifying. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad in the land of other nations, appearing like the other nations, the home subscribe to this truth to you. I say Shalom. So this is the brother Yahweh Sop out of the GMS Cleveland Church, a fellow servant. And I'm coming at you with another lesson through the spirit and through the power of Yahweh Shemel Shai. This lesson is in regards to an article I seen on my news break app that's going into basically you got a pestilence going on in New York, and it talks about how um well, I'm going to just read the title. It says, How the rat population in New York City grew by 800% and infested the city in less than 65 years. And that caught my attention because, you know, when you go into a pestilence, you know, it's a devastating, devastating infectious um, epidemic, basically. You know, like the bubonic plague. You know, which they try to say that rats may have been the reason why the bubonic plague spread the way it spread. Now, I'm not going to go into detail, but, you know, you know, the Bubaka play or the Black Death basically um, supposed to affect the Jake. Which make a lot of sense because everything's set up to fulfill prophecy, you know. But um, I read Jeremiah 28 and 8. Peace, if the word come to pass, that means truly the Lord has sent him. You know. When you go into the word prophesy, pro, and meaning before, and for meaning to say, we say the things that's written in the scriptures before they tend to happen. Because we know the, the words of the Yahweh Shem Yahshua are faithful and true. So it says, the prophet which prophesy of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord Yahweh Shem Yahshua, Salaki, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord Yahweh Shem Yahshua hath truly sent him. So, you know, the the men of the great millstone starting from the elders on down, we don't prophesy about peace because the scriptures aren't, you know, it's a time for peace and a time for war. And we're not in the time of peace. You know, you see war on the earth. So why would we be prophesying about peace? You know, like some individuals, you know, saying, you know, you talk about to warn your people, you know, you're supposed to be a watchman and you're supposed to give a, a, a shout or 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 or, 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 or make the people aware of danger approaching, you know, Scriptures talk about a time of Jacob's trouble. Scriptures talk about um, war and pestilence and, and great death. You know what I mean? So where is his peace? You know, in, in all this, you see in war and pestilence and great death. And part of the pestilence is, is that population of rats growing the way that they grew. You know. So, you know, it caught my attention and just, you know, through the spirit, I want to do a video, uh, a lesson on it. So this is the book of 2 Ezra chapter 15 and verse 1 and it reads, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord and cause them to be written in paper for they are faithful and true. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity or unbelief of them trouble thee that speak against thee. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Verse 5, Behold, saith the Lord, Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahushai, I will bring plagues upon the world the sword, famine, death, and destruction. For wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. So it's going to be Yahweh Ba Shem Yahushai that's going to send these plagues and pestilences. And you have many of them. You got um, these, you know, these spirits created for vengeance, these death angels out here jumping on people, having them commit acts of violence. You know, um, I was listening to the elder. Um, Mawatazak from um, Ancient of the Days, and he was going into, I guess, an incident happened where they don't know who did it, but this Jake's hair was removed from his body. You know, you got to have a, a, a really demonic spirit on you to be able to just to decapitate a person and just not, you know, 
not, you know, bug out. You are already bugged out. That ain't no regular individual. You know what I mean? Um, what's that? The second Ezra chapter eight and verse 50, because of the great pride of this place. That's why the Lord is going to send all these plagues and pestilences. This is the book of second Ezra chapter eight. And the point is verse 50 and reads for many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. You know, scriptures talk about how the most high hate of, um, the six things that the most high hate and pride is in the first one, you know, um, This is the book of 2nd Ezra 16, and let's start at verse 1. Woe be unto thee, Babylon, and it's, it's like it. Woe be unto thee, Babylon, and Asia. Woe be unto thee, Egypt, and Syria. Gird up yourselves with cloths of sack and hair. Bewail your children, and be sorry, for your destruction is at hand. A sword is sent upon you, and who may turn it back? A fire is sent among you, and who may quench it? Plagues are sent unto you, and what is he that may drive them away? So at the end of the day, who's going to turn these plagues away from hitting, you know, the world? The Most High is visiting the earth, which he made through these plagues. That's why you having, you know, that banking, um, you know, the, the, the banking situation with the banks collapsing. That's why you having, um, you know, these different viruses and, and, and diseases, you know, you know, it seems like every time you look up every week, they, the, the CDC talking about some kind of virus. You know what I mean? And it's going to be a, a, a time when literally they going to actually you know, unleash these viruses, you know. You know, and people be like, well, that's far fetched. But why? You know, these people have ancient, you know, when you, the CDC, basically the center of disease control could, has diseases that we haven't seen in years, but they just have them you know, basically store it away in a lab, you know, <laughs> what's the purpose of that? The scriptures talk about, um, uh, deliver thee from thy sword, from, from the wicked, which is thy sword, Psalm chapter 17, you know, so a lot of the, you know, you know, the wickedness and death that Esau prescribes is ordained to him to be able to do it through Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahushai. So when the Lord, you know, calls them angels to hold back them, them winds, ain't nobody going to be able to, you know, uh, <laughs> dry these plagues away or these pestilences. So I'm going to read a little bit of this article. It says, New York City's rat population has grown exponentially since the middle of the 20th century. In 1950, an estimated 250,000 rats lived in the city. By 2014, there were estimated 2 million. Now you go to 2023, the, the rise is partly due to changes in how the city deals with trash and how quickly rats breed. New York City's rats are relentless. They're also everywhere, in sewers and parks, under underfoot, on the subways, and even in your walls. And I can believe that, you know, I can believe that. And then, because, you know, rats, like, you got field mice and field rats and whatnot. Like, mice are baby rats. So when you go into uh, rats, like rats, you know, don't have a, a backbone. So you, you don't necessarily have to have a nasty house, but during the wintertime, a rat will run up to get warm. You know, you'll have a a, a, a a warehouse and rats and mice will run up into them to get away from, get up out of the cold. They've been in New York since the 18th century and they've taken a firm hold. Current estimates put the rat population at about 2 million across 90% of the city. Damn. Now this is New York. They said across 90% of the city. <laughs> <laughs> Everything in New York ain't the slums. You know what? And it made me think of that movie uh, Suicide Squad 2. Remember the lady that could, the, the chick that could that basically control the rats? For as long as rats have scurried across the city, polit politicians and locals have sworn to destroy them, but so far, no one's managed. Here's how rats took hold of the city. And it says, and why they're not about to let go. About 250 years ago, the Norwegian rat, also known as the brown rat, the alley rat, or the sewer rat, arrived in America on ships from Europe. No, the nasty ass Europeans brought them rats. <laughs> no one knows when the first rat made it, it made it ashore, but the extras are fairly sure they came during the American Revolution. Esau. Their first stop was likely likely to have been New York City, and they just showing these rats. They've got scars. They got missing eyes. They're missing parts of their tail. He said their life is fairly brutal. They're not soft, cuddly either, like mice or squirrels, as Fort Ham, 
University biologist Dr. Jason Mushi Salt told the New York Times, they're rough and mean. They fight each other. They also have sharp teeth, he said. They gnaw through walls. They gnaw through wires. They'll destroy cars, he said. Rats are agile and able to jump three feet high and four feet across, but their speed and agility aren't the only reasons why they're, they're master escape artists. Each of their many burrows usually has three exits, a primary one and two escape routes. Listen to this shit. The wildest part of the brown rat is the skull, meaning it's if its head can fit into a hole or space, it can and will get in there. Rats first mate. So that's the point. And it made me think, of, like I said, the Lord is going to use them as a plague and a pestilence because um, the Lord is going to use them, you know, to attack people. You know, um, scriptures talk about, um, you know, Jacob's trouble, which is basically the Lord judging two thirds of Israel. You know, he's going to use the teeth of wild beasts. This is Jeremiah chapter 15, verse one. Then said the Lord, Yahweh, uh, Shem Yahweh, shout to me, though. Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be towards his people. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. Verse 2. And it shall come to pass if they say unto thee, Whither shall we go forth? Then thou shalt tell them, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, such as are for death to death, and such as are for the sword to the sword. So like it, such as are for death to death, and such as are for the sword to the sword, and such as are for the famine to the famine, and such as are for the captivity to the captivity. Verse 3, and I will appoint over them four kinds, saith the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, the sword to slay, and the dogs to tear, and the fowls of the heaven, and the beast of the earth to devour and destroy. You know, a pig will eat a human body. <laughs> So you know, be, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if a rat would would because a rat will eat, you know, anything like he said, they'll they, they they bite babies and all that shit. You know what I mean? And then they carry disease. And the Lord is going to stir that, you know, like I said, <laughs> the Lord, because it, it tells you the most high is the the Lord of Sabbath oaths. And when you go into the word Sabbath oaths, it means host of armies. So the, anything can be an army of the Lord's from the demons to the the Alahayim. Um, to the animals, like off of Avatar, how the animals fought against Esau. This is the book of uh, Jeremiah, chapter 42. I'm gonna start at verse um, verse 15. And now, therefore, hear the word of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, ye remnant of Judah. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the power of Israel, if ye wholly set your face to enter into Egypt and go to sojourn there, then it shall come to pass that the sword which ye feared shall overtake you there in the land of Egypt, and the famine whereof ye were afraid shall follow close after you there in Egypt, and there ye shall die. You know, scriptures talk about uh, basically uh, arise. Um, you men that are settling on you on your lees. You know, scriptures talk about arise, you women, you careless women, um, in the book of Isaiah chapter thirty-two. You know, um, you know, all those that are joined up to Egypt, which is modern day Egypt is is aka America, Babylon the Great, you know. This place is Babylon because of Babylon or Babal means confusion, you know, and this place is a confused ass place, you know, it's multiple philosophies that this place is, uh, is intertwined into you know satanism you know strictly people really dress to worship you know hell and a red horned um red devil you know um uh, you know you, get, you got them um off into ancient egypt you know you know just a lot of customs i was looking at um this wine bar because we was trying to find you know kosher wine and um it was a wine bar off in Cleveland Heights so that that we considered Esau's um, neck of the woods, and these motherfuckers was wearing. You know, they took a picture, and I guess this the company, the wine company. They got wearing togas and all kind of shit. Got the reefs around their ear like they really Greeks or Romans. <laughs> I think I took a picture of it, if I'm not mistaken. But you got two thirds of our people that's going to want to be joined onto that. Verse seventeen, the point. So shall it be when all the men that set their faces to go into Egypt to sojourn, to sojourn, there sh they shall die by the sword, by the famine, by the pestilence, and none of them shall es remain or escape from the evil that I will bring upon them. Verse 18, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, 
the power of Israel, as mine anger and my fury have been poured forth upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so shall my fury be poured forth upon you when ye shall enter into Egypt, and ye shall be ex 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 creation and astonishment and a curse and a reproach and ye shall see this place no more because the Lord is going to judge not only you know two thirds of his own people but he's going to judge the place the, the habitat this land you know that's what brothers go into basically you know this place is going to be judged to the point where it's going to be destroyed and, and, and wiped off to the face of the earth and only you know desert creatures is going to dwell here you know snakes and lizards and you know animals that live in that type of habitat because this 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 won't be inhabitable anymore that's how much the fear of the lord is going to be on this place and scriptures talk about in the book of isaiah all those that are joined on to to this devil are going to be thrust through along with this devil this is the book of um luke chapter 21 This is Luke 21 and verse, I'm going to start at verse 8. And he said, take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Mashiach, and the time draw near. Go ye not therefore after them. So everything red letter we know is the words of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, who people ignorantly call Jesus Christ. Verse 9, but when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. You know, you're hearing about wars right now. You got wars. They're talking about America and Russia are fighting a war. They're talking about China and America look like a war is brewing. Those are rumors of wars. But even then, the end is not yet. We still have certain prophecies that have to come to pass, like the elder apostle Tahar always states. That that MOTB, that CHIP has to be implemented before you know, the end is truly here. Verse 10, then said he unto them, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. You know, you got blood moons. We just going into Genesis chapter one His brother was breaking it down. Like it said that, you know, the, the, the moon, the moon, the sun and the moon was um, put there to, for, a measuring tool to measure the signs of the times to measure the times so uh with that being said i'm gonna end it with this because at the end of the day you know we're gonna have more pestilence we're gonna have more judgment we're gonna have more plagues all these things gonna be sent because the most high yahweh about shimmy is visiting the world which he made but you know those that are you know his and that dwell up in the secret places of the most high which is this truth you know, the most high is going to protect them. This is Psalm chapter one. So like it, this is Psalm chapter 91 and verse one. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem, Shai, he is my refuge and my fortress, my power and him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the follower and from the noise and pestilence. Verse uh, four, he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and buckler thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor the arrow that flyeth by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand but it shall not come nigh thee you had fifty thousand individuals die in one day because of an earthquake and you're going to hear about more devastating judgment like that as time moves on and we get closer and closer to the end. Verse 8, the point, only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. So those that are delivered are going to see the destruction of this wicked ass place known as America because they're going to be, you know, delivered through those chariots. And the scriptures talk about in the book of Habakkuk chapter 2, the just shall live by, by faith. And that's our belief. That's our faith. Because we're going to need, <laughs> we're going to need uh, help from on high. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, that's why we're going to need a savior. And Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, who is our big brother, for those in the truth. That's why his name is, he is the deliverer. He is the savior. He saves, he's the deliverer. 
So if you're so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, Seminole Indian, West Indian, or Haitian, I implore you to come back to the law, statutes, and commandments of your power, whose true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh, Baal, Shem, Yahweh, Shah, or you will be destroyed. And with that, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to call Loyim, La Yahweh, Baal, Shem, Yahweh, Shah, Baal, Shem. I'd like to say double honors to my apostles, the elders of the great millstone, who teach and do rule well. Peace and salutations to the Akim across the four corners of the earth, pushing this truth with faith and with sincerity, as well as risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. Shalom to the Akim and the Akwath out there listening and learning. Lord willingly, this is edifying. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad in the land of other nations, appearing like the other nations, who won't subscribe to this truth. To you, I say Shalom. For next time I'm able to come with another lesson, I'm going to say Shalom, Shalom. Shalom.